Hey YouTube and fellow bibliophiles, welcome back to the channel, uh, the Reading Challenge Chat. Try saying that five times real fast uh, with me, uh, Book Dragon 9 And you might be wondering, why do you have your hoodie on backwards? Well, because this is on the back. And if you can't see it, which hopefully you can, just the dragon saying, yes, I do need all these books. And if I were to wear it the way I did in the last video, you don't see it. It's in the back. And you see the front plane part. So that's why I'm doing it backwards here. Um, so, again, uh, just before we begin on the uh, book for uh, this video, um, again, if you like, if you enjoy these videos, you know, press the like button, give it the thumbs up. Uh, also, you know, press subscribe. It's free for you and it helps me. It, it makes me, uh, you know, it helps me to understand that you guys are interested. It lets me know that you guys are interested in this and, and in what I'm reading and what I have to say and, you know, all of that, which is good. And, and it helps me out. And also turn on the notifications. That way you can get notified when new videos come up. Um, and they will be coming fast and furious until I get caught up. Um, I'm through 10 books right now. And I'm doing book three, so they're going to be coming pretty fast for a little bit. Um, I had a pretty good month in January of reading, so we're, we're now into February. Um, but we, we'll get caught up and get the uh, episodes posted. So also, in the comments below, uh, you know, leave what you think uh, about the, you know, the channel. Uh, what, what would you like to see more of? What would you like to see less of? Um, also, you know, leave your uh, good name. Good, uh, Goodreads name, if I can talk, um, in the comments below, and I will send an ad uh, invite. That way, um, all you have to do is accept, and we can see what each other is reading, and can give each other suggestions. Also, you can leave uh, suggestions for what you think um, I should be reading um, in the comments below. So we're going to get into now book number three, which is, again, by New Zealand author Janet Frame, called Faces in the Water. Now, in the last video, I talked about how she spent eight years in really bad mental health care in New Zealand, and it was really, really backwards, um, where, you know, the, the doctors didn't even talk to their patients. Um, electroshock therapy um, was used to intimidate and frighten patients into behaving if they weren't behaving. And if you didn't behave, then you were put down for treatment the next day. So this book um, follows um, Estina is uh, her main, is her, is her first name. And I'm trying to, again, remember the last name. But for some reason, it is really, really, it's just, it's, for, it's forsaking me at the moment. I don't know. But anyway, this book is... Auto, is basically autobiographical of what Janet observed in her eight years of really bad mental care in New Zealand hospitals. Um, she said later in her autobiography that she feels not then that she had cut too much out of this, that it was actually pretty worse than it shows in here, which is hard to imagine because, I mean, it's just really bad. I mean, and if you've seen the movie, I mean, that's where, I mean, it really hits you the most. But, you know, the autobiography doesn't talk too much about this period. She kind of lets this book do the, the talking. Um, and we'll go into, again, later why um, Janet ended up in a mental, mental institution um, and spent eight years on and off in all the electroshock treatments. But basically, the electric shock treatments that they received, she said, was the equivalent to the electric chair. And she had had probably hundreds, I believe she said. It might have lost count um, because you black out when you get that much uh, electricity going through. It's a, it's a miracle you survive. Um, the other thing that's interesting is this book also talks about lobotomies, which was new at this time. Uh, this was 1962, I believe, um, as I'm looking it up. 1961. I'm sorry, one year off. And she almost had a lobotomy herself. It was, there was one schedule. The doctors had talked her mother into signing for a lobotomy. And her collection of short stories won a 
major prize in New Zealand. It was like the highest pri literary prize you could win. And one of the doctors saw this in the newspaper and said, we're not giving you the lobotomy. We're keeping you just the way you are. Um, so the lobotomy saved her. Otherwise, we may not have this book or any of the other books that she wrote. Um, but basically, this whole novel takes place in an institution, mental institution, the different wards that there are, and how there's the step ups and the step downs, and how the electric shock treatment is sort of held over the patient. There's also the insulin shock treatment that is mentioned, though not as much as the electro shock therapy. That's mentioned more. But you, you, how the nurses and the doctors basically dangled it over the patients to get them to conform, to comply. Um, that's also what lobotomies really were used for, um, at least in New Zealand. It was to get the patient to be more cooperative, to be more calm. So they didn't have their mental moments um, where they might freak out and, and break into a, a, a big time panic or, you know, get violent or anything like that. So lobotomies were used more as a convenience operation than anything else. It didn't necessarily help the patients. It helped the doctors and the nurses more. And lobotomy patients, some were able to make it out into you know, society and, and, and live. Um, but a lot of patients didn't end up leaving the hospital. And you know, the, the only thing they really had to show for it was a bald head with a scar. And they had to wear hats when they went out, because otherwise they were known as the lobotomy victims, the lobotomites, basically. Um, so that's really what this book is about, is, is sort of how you can go from stepping up to the higher wards where you have a little more access to doctors, nicer nurses, and electroshock therapy isn't dangled over your head. And the things that you do that can kind of get you into those step-down lower wards where the nurses aren't so nice. The doctors just kind of come in and say good morning and keep walking on by. And they don't say, you know, they don't talk to you about wh how you're doing, you know, how you're feeling, how, you know, any kind of medications and working for you or not. Just, you know, put her down for electroshock without even talking. So, I mean, the character, Estina, here and as well as Janet, was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, again, this diagnosis came with really no talking to the character to the character or to her in real life um and we'll talk again a little bit more about that as well because she basically had doctors look into her case when she was living in england to see whether or not she really had schizophrenia and you know that's kind of interesting but in in this novel you know estina is basically schizophrenic or is diagnosed as a schizophrenic now, myself working with mental health um, within the field, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Um, I'm more a crisis worker. I, I work sort of on the front lines talking to people who are going through crisis and feeling suicidal. And I can say one thing that the healthcare system since this has come a long way, unfortunately. It still has a long, long way to come. There's still a heavy stigma attached to mental health and any kind of diagnosis a lot of people see as a characteristic, a stereotype, a label. And that kind of goes to that stigma. If we could get rid of the stigma, then people may not be so caught up in the fact that they might have a, a mental disorder and can get on medication and, and lead a, a normal life. I mean, we all have stuff going on in our heads, mental we all, we all have mental issues of some kind. Um, just some are more prevalent than, than others. Um, and some people have a tendency to feel them more than others. So, you know, if, if you're interested in learning about the way that the mental health field was, at least in New Zealand, back in about in the 1950s, um, because that's when these incidents would have been taking place, because the book was written and published in 1961. So the, the, the events would be happening in the 1950s. Um, I don't imagine that the United States and England were a whole lot better 
than New Zealand at that time. I, I would hope they would at least be a little bit better because this is just, this is a damning account of mental health uh, and mental health care in, in the 1950s. Um, so if, if you would like to read a story that kind of explores where we used to be in the field compared to where we are now, read this. It's, it's really a, a good read and it will keep you kind of riveted because you'll be wondering what's, what's up next. You know, what's, what's going on? What's going to happen next? Um, as I said, though, with Owls Do Cry in the last video, if you're looking for that feel-good, happy read, this isn't for you. None of Janet's books are going to be for you if you're looking for that feel-good read. Um, you know, any book that takes place in a mental, mental institution and has doctors and nurses using electroshock therapy to get patients to comply and be obedient... Um, otherwise you get, you get this. And I mean, they, they didn't even, all they did was they just put the thing between your teeth. They never even, you know, held, they didn't even, they didn't even strap you down, you know? So your muscles were flailing all over the place in, in, at this time. So that's kind of where this book is. Um, and, and it kind of gives you the insight to that. And if you're interested in that, I would definitely say, check this out. It's a really good book, really powerful book. Um, and, you know, outside of the autobiography, I mean, this is as much of her mental years, her mental institution years, that you're going to get. Um, none of the other books really kind of tackle that too much. Uh, she kind of, after she did this one, I think she just felt time to move on, you know, and, and do other stuff. But it would have been it would be it would have been interesting to see what this book would have been like if she didn't cut as much as she did. It clocks in at two hundred and fifty four pages, so it probably would have been at least probably three three fifty maybe more. Who knows? Um, but we'll never know. Uh, she you know she cut a lot down and and you know she burned a lot of her stuff, so it's probably gone. But anyway, uh, check it out five stars on Goodreads, and um, before I wrap it up again, you know, if you, again, if you like, enjoy the videos, you know, press the like button, hit the subscribe button, it's free for you, and it helps me know that you're interested. Um, also, click notifications, that way you get updated as to when new videos hit. Also, uh, you know, leave your Goodreads username in the comments below, I'll send an ad and we can kind of connect and, you know, I can see what you're reading and you can see what I'm reading and kind of see what, what reviews are going to be coming up next. Um, so th that would be cool. Also, you know, just leave reading suggestions for me in the comments below. I'm, I'm always interested in suggesting what you guys think um, I should be reading because I'm all over the board. So, I mean, anything that you want to suggest, you know, I'm, I'm definitely open. So with that... Um, I will wrap it up here, and I thank you guys for watching and for your support. Hopefully, you guys can continue to, to help support the channel um, so we can kind of keep the books going uh, just because I think having more literary channels on YouTube is a good thing um, to kind of go against some of the stuff that I normally see on, on YouTube. But um, with that, I will see you next time, and until the next book, bye-bye.